What is up guys? Dave Andrade here from the Post Color Blog. Today what we're going to look at is the edit tab within DaVinci Resolve 12. I had a couple requests from my last video to go ahead and take a look at this and that's what we're going to do. Uh, but primarily what we're going to focus on is the trim tools and the basic outline of the timeline layout. There's a multicam editing feature. We're not going to jump into that yet. If you want, I can do something specific on that. I know there's a couple of videos out there already, but basically what I'm going to show you is the timeline layout and what's new with this particular version and also the trim tools, what the terminology is, what it does and how you can use it in your particular workflow. So I've already imported the clips as you can see. Uh, this is from a short I was um, the DP on. So let's go ahead and going over into the edit tab. So we already have this particular footage loaded in our source monitor. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna click on it and drag it down. We're gonna move it down into the timeline. We have the video channel, we have the audio channel right there. Now let's quickly take a look at this. I'm gonna drag this out. And you can see we have the beginning clip and the trailing clip over here. We have the ending. Uh, we can change that. If we come over to here, you can show everything in between. Or you can choose to show nothing at all. So let's come back to, I like to keep this one up. Let's go into the track height. Now if those preview screens are too small for you, you can come in here. And now they're a little bit easier to see. What I'm going to do now is I'll click that off here and then I'm going to right click here, add track. It adds another video track. Right now we have this one selected with the orange outline. We'll come over here and select this one. So I'll double click on this footage. It loads it right here. I'm going to select an in and out point. Let's go ahead and choose I here. Uh, and just for reference, just because it's a tutorial video, I'm going to choose O here without necessarily scrubbing through everything. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come in here, bring it to the right. We have all these options, insert, overwrite, replace, fit to fill, and place on top. What I'm going to do is another insert, and you can see what it did. The timeline indicator was right here. We had this track selected, and it went and put the, tra put the footage on the right track. We can come and disable that, so now you see it's white or we can go ahead and take this and bring it down here and now this track is going to be the one that's selected. What I'm going to do is take this particular track and drag it down here and then we'll take the last one which is this one right here. So we have the footage loaded in the source monitor. Now I can come down here and drag it right into the timeline and it will snap right to the end of the last footage because we do have the magnet on here. So here we are, we have the three clips loaded into the timeline. I'm here on the pointer tool and what I'll do is hover over in between two of the clips. What this will give you is a roll tool. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And you can see how much leverage we have. That white outline you can see underneath is how much you basically can slide these left or right before reaching the end of the clip. Right now, if you can see, there's a green bar in between the two of the, both of the clips. If I go over here, you can see how it turns red. But what this will do is keep the timeline at the same exact length. But what it's going to do is, depending on which direction you go, it's going to shorten the clip or lengthen the clip. Uh, obviously, in this case, if we go left, it's shortening the beginning clip. And then the trailing clip is getting shortened if we move this way. Now, if I put it over on one particular clip, not in between, you can see what happens here. We can just shorten that one clip. But in this particular case, you can see what happens. It leaves a gap right in between, which is also fine because you can go ahead and ripple edit that anyway. What I did right now is click in between both of those. I'm hitting the delete key on my keyboard and it sends everything over. But what I'm gonna do is undo that. So I'm gonna come up here, edit undo. Let's go ahead and bring this back over.
and now we basically have our timeline back. You have your other options up here. We have the cut tool, basically, the razor edit tool, the insert, the overwrite, which will take whatever's up here and overwrite whatever footage you have selected in the timeline. Now, another thing we could do in the timeline is if I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select an in point and I'll select an out point right here, we could take the footage that's already up here in the source monitor. I'm going to go ahead and put insert clip and it's going to put it right in here, right within the in and out points that I set within the timeline. Let's go ahead and take this clip and drag it to the left here. All right, and now we have our four clips. So let's go ahead and go from this particular icon to this one here, which is the trim tool. And then what I'm gonna do is come back here. Let's go ahead and adjust the track height. And I'll show you what options we have as far as the trim options go. Okay, and right here we have the roll tool. If we hover right in between the middle, left and right, you see where your parameters are. And next to where we have selected, if I go to the left or the right, what we can have is a ripple edit. And what that is, that will adjust the length of your timeline. But what it will do is, as you can see, bring everything downstream. It will shorten the clips, but it won't affect anything down here. I'll show you again. If we go ahead and do this, now we're dragging those clips to the right of where I'm dragging, but nothing on the left is really getting affected. And as you can see, the overall timeline is getting shorter. So the difference between the two, if we were to hover in the middle here, what you're doing is adjusting basically the in and out points. And that's why you have the two up up there. You can see, well, maybe when he takes his, all right, so when he, maybe when he points at the screen, that's where we want it to end. And then we can let go, but the timeline remains the same exact length. And again, we take the ripple edit. We can bring this over here. Now this is similar to the tool that you saw in the normal edit mode. Now let me go ahead and select that. We'll go ahead and highlight this, click on that. But what this is, as you can see, that won't ripple edit. That will just actually shorten your clip as you desire. So let's go ahead and put that back. We come in here, now we come and it's, it's a ripple edit. It will bring everything with it and won't leave gaps in your timeline. Okay, the next trim feature that we're going to look at is the slip option. So let's go ahead and make sure that we'll have this selected up here. We're going to hover over the footage. And if, as you can see in the middle there, if we just hover in the middle, there's that icon with the arrows pointing both ways. So what I can do is left click and you can see our parameters there. You can see how far left and right we can go with the white, white out, outlines. So let me go ahead and slide this way. You can slide left and right. Now what that's showing you up there is but by doing this you're not adjusting the length of the clip that you selected you're just adjusting its space and time so if you don't like that in particular you can move it here and you're like, well, wait a minute, I don't want it in that particular spot. I'm gonna hover in the middle, slide it over. Timeline doesn't change. And then now we come back and we select it and all as well. Okay, and the last one I'm going to show you is the slide option. Now what this one does is it also doesn't change the length of your clip, but it will affect the previous clips and it won't change the overall length of your timeline and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and take this clip right here. We had this one for the slip tool. Now we're going into the slide tool. So let me go ahead and bring it down here. And that's our slide option right there. Again, left clicking, you can see our, our parameters. We can slide left and right. Again, we have that four up. But now it functions a little differently. Now the clip is not going to change. It's going to remain in the same location, same length, but what you're affecting now, now you'll be affecting what you see as the last frame of the clip previous and what you see as the first frame of the clip following. And this won't affect the overall timeline. As you can see, the timeline remains the same. The clip remains the same. 
but where it transitions between the clip before and after, that's what's different. So let's go ahead and go over these one more time. I'm going to come in here, make this video a little bit larger. So just to summarize our trim operations again, we're going to click in between here. It's green, so that means we know we have leeway. Over here, if I was to click, that just means that one of these clips, you're not able to extend it more than it already is. It's, it's reached its limit. But anyway, we're going to click in between here. We have the roll option. You can see the two lines on the side. And then you can slide left and right, and it will show you where the clip cuts off on each side. And the white outline, of course, at the bottom, timeline doesn't change. The ripple edit, which the timeline length will change, as you can see right here. But what it will do is not leave gaps. If we come up here and grab this, you can see that if we, let's go ahead and grab this over here. You can see where it's going to leave a gap in the middle there. It's not going to ripple edit and bring everything with it. Let's go ahead and undo that. So that's pretty much the only one that affects the overall length of the timeline. So let's come back here. We're going to hover in the middle. This one's going to be a slip. It's not affecting really the length of any clip, the one before or the one after. What it's affecting is the in and out point of the clip that you have selected. And then we have this last icon at the bottom. Let me see if I can show you on this particular clip where you just have sort of the outside brackets. Let's go ahead and use this one for an example. It's going to keep the timeline the same length. It's going to keep the clip the same length in the same location, but it's going to affect the clip surrounding it. And you have the four up to see where that is. Again, the top left and right are the first and last frames of that particular clip. Bottom left is the last frame of the previous clip, and the bottom right is the first frame of the following clip. Now a lot of this stuff was included in DaVinci Resolve 11. You have your marker, you can always come in here and if you wanted to mark a point, you could just choose M. Let me go ahead and bring this down so you can see it, and our marker's been placed right there. If you wanted to, you could double click on it. You can edit the marker. You can choose a different color if you so chose, or you could uh, see, for type example. Another thing I'm going to show you guys is dynamic editing. So let me hit W. Now it's a dynamic trim. So let's go ahead and use our J, K, and L keys, which are used in most editors. We have the J for back, K for stop, L for moving forward. So let's go ahead and click right here. And then we're going to use the J key to move it back. All right, I'm going to click K to stop it. We could always come over here and hit L, move it ahead and move it forward, see what we like up there, and hit K. And that will cut it at that particular point. A couple other things I wanted to show you guys is how you can insert footage into your timeline. What we can do is take the footage here from the source monitor. I'm gonna drag it over. Now we can use an overwrite option, which will just blindly go ahead and insert the footage right over on top of the footage that you already have. So if you keep a look at the timeline right there, I'm gonna go hover over here on overwrite. And that's exactly what it did. It went right over the footage that we had right there. The sum at the end, because it's lengthier than the footage that we dropped on there. So let's edit undo that. Now if I take that same footage, come over here, instead of overwrite, we go to insert, you can see that where we had the timeline indicator, it inserted the footage right there, it pushed the other footage off to the right hand side, and now we have both in there. Let's go ahead and edit undo that. We can also choose the option to replace, so let's go ahead and do that. And what this will do is remain the same length as the footage that's already there. So if I go ahead and click replace, replace the footage. Now if we go ahead and drag this out, I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's take this footage, come over here and hit replace. And there you go. It replaced the footage right in the timeline. 
Let's go ahead and make this timeline a little bit smaller. I'm going to lower the video here. All right. Now we're going to take this footage right here. Let me go ahead and put it next to this particular footage. Take it, drag it over, place on top. Again, that's exactly what it does. And then of course you can choose the transitions as you want. If you wanted this to be a little bit shorter, you can come in here and make that shorter. Now you can change the speed of a clip as you can in uh, most other editors. If you right click, come over here, change clip speed. It's going to check your uh, frame rate and let's go ahead and change it to 50%. We're going to ripple the sequence so that everything kind of remains the way that it is and it gets pushed along. So we'll hit change. You can see how everything got pushed forward and now the clip is in slow motion and twice as long for that reason just by choosing that option. Another thing you can do to get precise is as you saw there I can go ahead and click in between the two pieces of footage and now I'm going to use my period key and we're skipping frame by frame if we don't like where we're going we're like oh we went too far go ahead and hit the comma key you can kind of bounce back and forth between the two that way you can get really precise edits like uh, maybe when the clapboard comes down I'm gonna leave it right there come back uh, you know what I don't want that come back all right we'll leave it right there and we have the ability over here to go ahead and lock a track that way you can make sure and you can see how it sort of grades itself out that way you don't accidentally overwrite anything or slide anything over You're leaving the track as is you know don't touch it and then uh, go ahead and go forward with your edit in fact, just to prove the point, we're going to take this footage right here. I'm going to click on it, come over here to overwrite, and keep an eye on the timeline down there where the timeline indicator is. And you can see that it didn't overwrite the footage at all. It did have an effect down here on the audio, but I never locked the track on the audio. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I know I haven't touched on everything, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning. I just wanted to make this a really short video, and I wanted to touch on the main points of just getting the footage into your timeline, the basic timeline layout, some settings that you might want to take a look at, and just kind of get you rolling. A lot of trim tools, that way you can get the footage looking exactly like you want. So if you like what you see here, go ahead and give it a like. Go ahead and share this and go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and keep an eye out for more of resolve 12 videos if you have any suggestions for other particular videos either with color grading or editing or compositing anything like that after effects premiere pro just go ahead and let me know leave it in the comment or go ahead and send me a message and i'll talk to you guys soon thanks for watching bye